I first want to thank my colleagues for uh, overriding the veto on the previous item. But on this item, I, I have to make it a point that I am asking that this be filed, but I'm doing it in a personal protest because there's still some issues that need to be resolved. And this issue that has, that has overwhelmed the issue that really is about people and about public housing has become overwhelmed with council and mayoral authority. And that issue has not been resolved. And I think Mr. Martin put it clearer than anyone else. We say we up here, we want to share the problems. We want to share budget shortfalls. We want to share failed programs. But it's either me or you when we want to make certain decisions. And so I just want to put everybody on notice that I'm not through with this issue. And if I'm not able to accomplish it through this council, I will try to accomplish it if I'm fortunate enough to be sent back in a future council. But this issue, uh, I, I'm not going to, it will not rest. Um, I want to say the agreement that was made in the memorandum of understanding, the first letter that was received, uh, you all sent a, got an email from me saying that I wasn't in agreement because the major portion of it was left out. And that was the bifurcated process by which the council would have some opportunity to receive these applications and review them. And as of today, uh, earlier today or this afternoon, most council members received a letter that included that back in there. I did ask for four weeks of review instead of three. They would not agree to four weeks, but I'll take what we can get. I think that some some review is better than no review. If nothing else, and I know for those people who are out there, this is not where we want it to be. Uh, but I do think that if nothing else, having a forewarning that these are going out gives us plenty of opportunity to galvanize in other ways to make sure that community, residents, council members, and whoever else has an interest can get involved. So. Um, while I'm not happy with this, and I do not concede the fact that the mayor can send a letter on behalf of the city of Atlanta in support of demolitions without council approval. Again, council has in the past in resolutions done this. So it's nothing new and it's nothing illegal about it. It wasn't illegal then. It's just that this administration got out of that practice. And then another thing, this council has the legal authority to set policy. That's all we do. And to the extent that we want to set policy that sets out a process by which these letters are done, HUD says they're not involved in that. And they actually don't care about that and they won't get involved in that. It's up to us as policymakers to set that policy. So I believe that we have every right to set that policy. It's just an the matter of having enough votes to do it. So I just want to put people on notice. I'm not through with this issue yet. Um, so I will cut, this is a big compromise for me because while it does give me what I want on one hand, which is input, it does not set out the policy that I believe is legally possible to have in this city. So I do want people to know I'm giving up a lot for this temporary benefit. Uh, and then finally, I just want to say that why is, it, why is it important for us to have input? It's important for us as council members to have input, and frankly, it's really the, the mission of, that com of the Community Development Committee to be more actively involved in this issue because you don't move something on one end without it impacting another. My constituents are very aware of that delicate balance. And it's a very delicate balance. I have mixed income communities in my district where some of them have 40 percent of vouchers or voucher holders. It's a very delicate balance between that and market rate people. I don't know if the percentage is exactly right, but there's a very delicate balance right there. It's a delicate balance in that in coming into the neighborhoods and people's and, and moving into neighborhoods. So while I'm losing Bowen Homes, Bankhead, and Hollywood eventually, 
I'm not really losing the people, which is good because they, they're welcome to stay because they're staying in the same community. So while we're saying we want to deconcentrate poverty, unless we address the root issue of poverty, we're not deconcentrating anything. We're just spreading it out. We're putting it in other pockets. All of these apartment complexes that we have in our district, they're going to become the de facto public housing. So we're just going from public property to private property. We don't have a unit for unit replacement policy in this city, so we are taking a lot of affordable units that could probably be fixed up out of the mix. Uh, hopes This new Hope 6 policy, hopefully, if it comes through, would have that in there. And one thing that I found troubling, but I guess we're addressing this, is if we are going to, on the front end, say, yes, we support the demolition, the housing authority wasn't willing to work with us on that, on letting us have a part of that, they certainly wouldn't have any problem coming to us for the $248 million that they project coming to us to support rebuilding and building infrastructure for the new communities that are coming in. So the issue of whose authority is that, that's one, I guess, what, that will be resolved for another day. But I will say that if nothing else, this does get uh, some assurance that we get some knowledge of it on the front end. The final process is one that I will continue to work on uh, as I uh, sit on this council. So I will let it go at that and ask that we um, file this paper. And at the end of the council meeting, I will introduce a paper and I will ask, I will pass it down for my colleagues who would like to sign on to it to accept the two letters that AJ has and the clauses of things that they have agreed to do in that uh, resolution. Thank you, Ms. Warman.